Council Member Schroeder? Here. Council Member Ms. Kelly? Here. Council Member Jablonski? Here. Vice Mayor Brightcruz? Here. Mayor McKay? Here. Stanford Pledge, please. Russell, and you. This is a uh, LPA resolution. Resolution. Uh, it's a resolution of the Local Planning Agency of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, recommending that the Town Council amend the Town of Southwest Ranches Unified Land Development Code, <clears throat> Article 10, entitled "Definition of Terms" to define the term composting or mulching operation. Amending Article 55, entitled "M Manufacturing and Industrial District," to revise the list of permitted, conditional, and prohibited uses and the limitations of uses pertaining to composting, mulching, recycling, and other waste processing, and providing for an effective date. Mayor and Council, um, this item, which is then on the Council agenda, so we'll incorporate by reference everything discussed at this, is so critically important, especially after a storm in the ranches, when people are trying to convert their private homes or even you know nurseries into mulching operations, not for themselves, but bringing in debris from all the other communities to their establishments uh, to mulch them uh, on their property. Uh, Robert and I have had, sorry you moved, uh, so many cases um, uh, of recent where not only have they uh, turned it into major wholesale factories of mulch, but have totally changed the topography of the land to which they were on uh, with mounds and mounds like you've never Illegal seen uh, of mulch, yeah. you know? Um, our code is, is pretty clear that this um, uh, activity is not legal today, but because of the fact that there's so many attorneys now involved challenging our code at the code enforcement level, we felt that it was necessary to enhance the code with this language so that there's no question that no one could argue to a judge again that that activity is not legal. You are 100%, if you have a nursery, allowed to mulch your own uh, debris that you generate. We're not impacting those people at all. Who we're impacting is someone trying to bring outside vegetative waste to their property for a profit to create mulch. And so it's here for your review and approval. I make a motion to approve. Second. Any public comment on this matter? Bob Hartman, 5441 Southwest 198 Terrace. I completely support the purpose of this ordinance or this language change. I just want to talk about two unintended consequences. George brought one up at the last meeting when this was discussed. Uh, this could drive a lot of those landscapers to, instead of hauling it off to the couple of people that do the mulching operations in town, to add it to our bulk piles. They shouldn't. Maybe we need to change code to make that proactive so that they can hand all these landscapers a piece of paper saying, thou shalt not. But I have a feeling that we might see our bulk creep up due to this change. The other thing I want to make you aware of is coming home from work tonight on US 27, I have a feeling I saw a glimpse of a major mulching operation about to start up. Last hurricane, they use the property that they're building the building on now on uh, 196th and Sterling, and they also use the property that he's got all the cars parked on. So I think by probably Friday, you're going to see a large-scale mulching operation on US 27. Thank you. Bob, just uh, to answer your first part, uh, even though I normally don't chime in, luckily we do have a 10-year contract with the waste hauler. So um, luckily we don't have to worry about the uh, the price creeping up right now. Good. Um, I will tell you that under that contract, they are supposed to monitor and regulate to help code enforcement to avoid that situation where Good. landscapers put that out. Good. So. Glad you thought of it. Thank you. John Eastman, 188th. Uh, this is really needed. Keith, thank you for all the work on this. And I'm, I'm very happy that you were able to uh, realize the, the impact this has on our quality of life. 
you know, listening to these grinders going on a Sunday afternoon uh, and the vibration and the noise, and I'm blocks away from it. And then the daily amount of traffic coming in of landscapers dumping there from all over the county, even North Dade, uh, it's just, it has to end. And it's going to increase our quality of life, and it's going to decrease traffic on the side streets and the main roads. Thank you. Any additional public comment? Seeing no additional public comment. Public comment is closed. Back to us. Anyone else? D? I'm good with this. Okay. <laughs> Ready? I'm good with it. I'm for it, 100%. Steve? Gary? Everybody? Great idea. All right. Call the question. Board Member Schroeder? Yes. Board Member Fisichelli? Yes. Board Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Chair Rikers? Yes. And Chair McKay? Yes. Motion passed. Minutes. All right. Approval of minutes, please. Motion to approve. For June 22nd, 2007. Second. Okay. Any public comment related to correction of minutes? See no corrections. Thank you, public. Uh, call the question. Board Member Schroeder? Yes. Board Member Fiskelli? Yes. Board Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Chair Breakers? Yes. Chair McKay? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All right. Got to stand and do the pledge all over again and start again regular meeting. All right. Everybody, please stand. Roll call. Roll call, please. Council Member Schroeder? Here. Council Member Fisichelli? Here. Council Member Jablonski? Here. Vice Mayor Breakers? Here. Mayor McKay? Here. Mayor, we have uh, two yeah. public, uh, three public? Oh, mm -hmm. I only saw two. Where's one? John, uh, um, Bob Hartman. John Eastman's number one, Bob Hartman's number two, and mm -hmm. uh, Newell Hongsworth is three. Unless you identify for budget, and if so, I apologize. So if you wave, just go. Okay. So uh, John Eastman, Bob Hartman, and Newell. Thank you. Just wanted to make some comments on the, the storm, the arrival, the event, and now the cleanup. Uh, ranchers helping ranchers. I saw some great community effort out there. Uh, we had some roads blocked. We put the word out, people came, we took care of it. Uh, neighbors are helping each other out with stuff like uh, you don't see in other communities. And I'm really appreciative of my neighbors and uh, you know, it just goes to show you that we all get together when stuff like this happens. Uh, I know Andy was probably buried on his end. Uh, Davy police were out, I saw them, you know, they were patrolling. Uh, I know the fire department made a few runs because I heard them. I don't know what was up, but, you know, things happened and we functioned. Thank you, John. Bob Hartman, 5441 Southwest 198 Terrace. You know, we have a whole collection of words we're proud of. We're independent. We are, you know, we're special. But I have a new word. We're very re resilient. No, that's not the right word. We are self-reliant um, before the storm winds that even stopped the other night my neighbors are out there we're out there with chainsaws one guy's out there with a uh, forklift moving the trees out of the way it's what he had it's great I dulled chainsaw blades like crazy over the last couple of days worked with a work party with John and Doug and a number of other residents trying to get streets clear when I went tonight to drop my daughter off over at Regency for the movie I was shocked when I went down 185th, 4th to the end. There wasn't a tree in the way and there were giant stacks of everything piled out front. People pulled together, they got their own stuff done. I mean, our town looks like a war zone right now because we, have, we had so much beautiful landscape, but people pulled it together and I'm sure it'll look like this for a while. Uh, we'll have stacks and piles for a while, but you know, my neighbors are out helping each other. None of these people know each other, but they were out helping out. 
Uh, I saw the same thing over on uh, Debbie Street as well on 199th. Same thing. I was over uh, uh, helping some people out on the other side of town. Same thing. People just coming out to try to help out. So I think that self-reliance is something we should be proud of as well. We didn't need, sorry to say it, but government to come in and help out. It was all volunteers. Government did a great job. I did want to say thank you to the town administration. I think you guys were up from last Wednesday till now, <laughs> pretty much, between budget and storm. Great job. I want to make a recommendation, though, on the, the hotline you guys have. Um, have the ability to include a second number, because I think I signed up for this whenever you set it up a couple years ago. You have my home number, which is a voice over IP number. So as soon as we lost power, you couldn't call me anymore. No, I, I signed up a second time with my cell phone and didn't get the first message. So, yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not looking to pour more work on you, Mar uh, Andy. Get some sleep. But maybe if, you could, if I could go back to my original one and append additional phone numbers, that would probably be helpful because we had no internet, no nothing. Once the power went down, the phone closets all go down, everything goes along with it. We had cell phones and we had one dot, which was great. My kids weren't on their phones the whole time for a change. But uh, I, I really saw us, like John said, pull together as a community, and this is a community I'm proud of, I'm proud to be a part of, and, uh, and, and all my neighbors made me proud as well. Thank you, folks. Noah Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Um, on the bulk uh, contract we have, the last flyer had some very good information, but they forgot one little tiny thing. And Steve mentioned it in his new newsletter that's in the uh, trash wrapper that comes. That when, after the 12 yards, they're going to pick it up, but they're going to send you a bill. That has not been told to the public by the town at all. We've got to make that clear to these people instead of having cultural, physical, Bill Shock, and people calling the town going, what the, <laughs> I hear you, with, you know, the modest way we all get, and talking to all of you that way, and talking to Andy that way, and so we need to actually, you know, put something out with a font about that big that says, after the 12 yards, they're going to take pictures, and they're going to build you for the extra yardage, and take it away instead of just, you know, spray painting on it and say, oh, reject. <coughs> so better notification has to be done on that. Nowhere has it been said by the town that is what's coming. Well, we have some extra t time now because we got this FEMA thing. Well, I heard the other day in Publix from uh, a gentleman who lives in the town and is connected with the st uh, county government that Broward County did not suffer a hurricane, according to FEMA. Dade County had 75 plus miles sustained. Palm Beach County had 75 plus miles sustained, but Broward County did not. So therefore, FEMA has said Broward County did not have a hurricane, therefore were not eligible for FEMA hurricane expenses. Broward County is going to be fighting that. I think the town needs to also find out about that and, f and get on that bandwagon with them for the simple reason that the federal government in uh, January reduced the payments from 90% to 75%, but after Harvey in Texas, they moved it back up to 90% reimbursement. So Big deal to us. right now, we're on our own picking up 100% with no reimbursement possible if what I was told is true. That is a very big difference and something that needs to be investigated and found, found out about. Because if Broward County did not have 75 mile an hour sustained winds, we did not have a hurricane, therefore we're not eligible for hurricane reimbursement. Thank you. Anyone else? I saw, so I saw you come in. Would you like to speak in public comment? 
<laughs> Feel free to come up and speak for a public comment if you'd like. Pull the mic down so we can hear you. Ah, uh, oh, yeah. I, there you go. Uh, vertically challenged. Um, I'm Bill Sunday. I live on 4825 Southwest 170th Avenue. Uh, the first four houses on our street on the east side has power. And from 48th Street uh, south, uh, because there is a tree on power lines on that, uh, the second house in, and further down on 170th, there's another power line down. And uh, we had power for about five minutes yesterday. No, two days ago. And then uh, I guess w that was when they turned the power on Griffin Road, from what I understand. And, uh, you know, we're uh, running generators. I, I'm, the reason I'm late is uh, a couple of my neighbors was trying to repair my generator. And fortunately, another neighbor had theirs fixed today and loaned me theirs. So, you know, we're doing the best we can, but I do have a couple of neighbors that don't have generators. And um, uh, last night I had one of my uh, neighbors and over for at least he could get a hot shower or a, a, a warm shower. But, uh, you know, it would be nice. We do have a lot of branches that we've piled up uh, along the street and so forth and you know uh, if we're limited to our uh, uh, two cubic yards uh, a thing we're going to be until uh, Christmas time uh, before it gets all picked up. Yeah the debris part is the bulk, bulk is not it's going to be FEMA pickup for starting probably Friday Oh, okay. so don't worry you can put out whatever you've got that's in the way and down from the storm Okay, you can put out Fortunately, my neighbors helped me. I lost about 50 banana trees and uh, a couple of big branches and a uh, lemon tree and almost everybody, you know, there's two or three houses really got lucky, didn't ha have all or hardly any uh, tree debris and nobody about on our street. a third of the town is still out. What? About a third of the town is still out. Of power? Yeah. Oh, okay. We, you know, we're making do would be, you know, it's going to be kind of amazing uh, I hear on the news that uh, FPNL is going to have all of Florida up and running by Sunday. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. No. <laughs> uh, that's all I have. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. Anyone else? All right. Public comment is closed. Back to us. Board report. Board reports? Any board reports? I don't think so because we haven't had any uh, meetings, but I'll be surprised if somebody steps up and says there is. <laughs> All right. Council member comments. D, you want to go first? Sure. I just want to thank the entire staff. I thought Sandy did an outstanding job. Thank you, Sandy. I applaud Emily for, for going away and sleeping on a nasty old cot and being available to us to, to meet any needs that we needed. I want to uh, thank Andy for all your hard work. I'm glad to see everybody was safe. And as far as I know, we didn't have anybody really injured or, or hurt in the town, and, and that's what it was really all about. I've seen, just like Bob and John and Noel and everybody, uh, Everybody's out there, and they're just hammering it and knocking it out as best they can. And uh, uh, that says a lot for our town. You you live in a big municipality. You're not going to get that. You know, nobody's wants to venture out and help everybody. So um, I'm I'm just grateful I live here. And uh, that's about all I have to say. I'm good, Steve. Um, yeah, I, th I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of what I was going to say has already been said. I'll just say that, uh, we are fortunate to live where we live. Um, we've got a good administration. Um, Sandy, kudos to you. I know you've put in incredible amount of time and effort and, and people see a small portion of that, uh, um, during the storm and before the storm and after the storm, but this goes on all year long in preparation and, and. Uh, getting ready for something like this. It doesn't just happen at the last minute. So thank you for all you've done and all the staff that has, has helped. Um, 
and our residents, you know, what, what can we say? Uh, you know, appreciate Mayor. I know you've done a great job and, and the others uh, that have helped out getting together and moving all that stuff. Um, and beyond that, just the way the neighbors have gotten together and, uh, you know, helped one another is just huge. Um, it's, it's, it makes you really proud to live here and to live with the folks that, uh, that we live with. So uh, we're very fortunate. Um, just one other piece of uh, regular business that I wanted to touch on. Um, uh, we invited uh, Commissioner Geller here uh, not too long ago and uh, asked him to um, relook at the uh, site out west um, on Griffin Road, potentially there where it splits over there by uh, 202 and see if uh, from the sheriff's perspective if that would be a good site. Um, I just got a letter uh, just the other day, um, just yesterday is when I, I, I got it. So um, basically uh, he's passing on that he did that review with the sheriff and uh, no, that site does not uh, qualify. So, well, you know, I just, but I, did, I do appreciate the fact that uh, that he did, you know, he followed through and, and he looked at it again. It yeah, he gave it a shot. So, um, uh, so, but we've got some other options that we're working on. Good. So, thank you. Good. Yeah, I'll go next. Uh, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, I want to thank the staff and, uh, and I especially want to take, uh, thank uh, Hurricane Sandra um, for an outstanding job here. Um, and you know, I fall for this trick every time on my cell phone, Sandy's calling me, I go, hey Sandy, what's up? And then, <laughs> you know, it, it gets me, me every me time. Me too. <laughs> and then I, then I get the okay. recording, okay, I go, click. Yeah, it, I mean, but it, every time I go, hey Sandy, what's up? And, and then it, you know, it hits me, you know, it, it did it, I'm getting a pre-recorded message, you know. So, it, and it's very informative, so it's not really a trick. I mean, I just, it's just the way I react to it. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, at any rate, you know, uh, we have some structural damage. We have a tremendous amount of tree damage. Um, you know, I was reflecting uh, uh, with my neighbors and my wife the last 24 hours. You know, we made it through it safe and sound. That's the part that counts. Trees will regrow. We can cut them down. I, I urge everybody to really be careful with the chainsaws. Uh, you know, I think it's some statistic like 50% of all uh, major weather events uh, happen after the storm in debris removal and things of that nature. So I urge everybody to, if you're watching this on uh, cable, if anybody has cable, you know, uh, next to power, that's, you know, that's kind of up there. Um, and we live in an internet world of things and uh, most of us don't have it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, especially in my community. So at any rate, the other thing I want to mention is um, the, uh, in response to one of the residents, uh, there is a, procedure that's outlined here in the newsletter uh, for September uh, code enforcement uh, and you if you could turn to that after the schedule of uh, uh, pickup and it'll explain to you the the uh, code procedures if you're over the limit uh, that I don't think that has anything to do with the uh, debris removal right now I believe that will be uh, further processing um, after we get the whole uh, you know we get the initial cleanup I mean this is a five to ten year contract now we're talking about here so uh, and there, and there, there's sure to be some glitches and some improvements here and uh, some restructuring, uh, you know, uh, tweaking along the way, for lack of a better way of saying it. Um, but, I'm, you know, I, I haven't heard of anybody uh, getting major hurt. I'm sure there has been some people that have done that in the town. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, my prayers are with you, you know, if that is. But most people came through it very safely, and uh, we, we have a lot of cleanup to do. And I urge everybody to be safe, you know, uh, while we're doing it. And I'll conclude with that, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. A couple of things. Uh, we got a glancing blow. Could have been 100 times worse, folks. So uh, I would tell you, uh, thank the good Lord for uh, what we got, uh, which was not much. But uh, I'm grateful. Uh, I still don't have power. A lot of you still don't have power. I think the uh, numbers I'll read to you real quick. Uh, the accounts for the town of Southwest Ranch is about 3,000 accounts of FPNL. Uh, affected was uh, 1,960. Uh, restored is 850. And still to be restored and not up yet is 1,110. So uh, that's where we are as far as power outage for us. And it's going to be a little bit till. Uh, some of the other stuff gets fixed. Uh, I want to thank all the residents, all the volunteers, the guys with heavy equipment, 
I mean, from, you know, I, I'm going to name them all because I'm going to get a whole list for the next meeting. But uh, everybody's pitched in, done a great job helping out. Don't wait for anybody else. They just get together and go get the job done. And I was a part of one with the residents and uh, volunteers yesterday. We had a great time, and in an hour, we cleared a humongous tree out of the road. So, uh, and it wasn't even in our town, um, so, but it connected to us. So uh, I just want to thank everybody who stepped up and participated and helped getting those things done. And uh, I think we're going to have to be looking out for some of the other residents who are older and can't get things done or not able. And I think we're going to have to uh, help out in some other areas along the way to uh, help get some additional things done. So uh, I'm good with that. So uh, are you up, uh, Keith? Sure. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Uh, Echo the sentiments of uh, council. Uh, I think staff and your administration did an incredible job. Um, I told Andy, fortunately, it was almost like a dress rehearsal because as bad as it was, it could have been worse. And I think going forward, you know, this community has lined up very impressive uh, list of uh, vendors who can jump in immediately and staff who has a real expertise on how to deal with crises such as this one, um, and I know all of us, even uh, phones, no phones, et cetera, were communicating through the entire storm, you know, about what was happening in the ranches. I get to interrupt you. I think Verizon gets the Medal of yeah, Honor on this one. Good. And we're, we're going to get you a push talk. <laughs> there you go. I was good, though. We're going to get I mean, you a push talk. Uh, the mayor was texting me during the storm, and, and I said, uh, Mayor, you, you need to go inside. And he was driving his truck around the streets of the ranches surveying damage in the middle of the storm. And I said, you know, it's better to do that afterward. But uh, I know I came bright and early, the true story, <laughs> I came uh, bright and early the next day, did a drive around in between that day and today, the town looks 100% different in, in, in moving forward. Um, I've spent the last two, three days now not only doing disaster relief uh, agreement modifications, two of which are on the agenda tonight, uh, but dealing with uh, other issues. Uh, one thing I want to bring up uh, that, that goes along with the, the mayor's comment on FPNL outage, I just checked, and, and as of right now, of the 933,300 uh, residents of Broward County, 284,800 still are without power. So the, the trend on FPNL on the on the percentage is it meets the same percentage of Southwest ranches, you know, as a result. Um, I've called personally FPNL hundred times or more, speaking with representatives who are, are very high up in their food chain. And I can assure you that um, we're not being treated as a stepchild. But the, the issue is they go to where the largest masses are, are first, and, and that's just reality. Um, the one drawback for all of us, including myself in the next couple of months, uh, of living a rural lifestyle is the unfortunate nature of the fact that we are so spread out that we're truly living the rural lifestyle. And um, I've requested and they've agreed to have a meeting with us in FPNL, a workshop with them following them getting everyone back online and on their feet to discuss ways in the future that we can work together to ensure that a shorter duration of power outages uh, for our residents, whether it be for burial of lines, whether it be for some form of generation or generators uh, for residents through, um, you know, there's all these new funding sources that help you finance them or whether it be uh, tree pruning, which I know John Eastman was very successful in his street in doing, we need to figure out a better mechanism townwide of working with FPNL to try to limit the duration of the outages. And they, even today, were very uh, appreciative of the suggestion and said that they'd like to have a workshop with our town to discuss that for the future. Um, I know that Andy is on them as much as I am, Sandy, everyone else, trying to get them out here. Um, there were some issues today, not in the ranches, but I want to bring it up anyway for when our power does get online. Hopefully people can hear this. Uh, this morning there was a, uh, a section of Deerfield w that went back online. One of the residents there was cooking prior to the power going out, 
and then the power went out for the three days and he loaded boxes actually on his stove and forgot that the stove was on. So the minute the power went back on, his, his house caught on fire and uh, was completely destroyed. Um, remember, generators need to be stored outside. The moral of that story was obviously make sure everything's off prior to your power going back on, including air conditioners and otherwise, because you can have significant surges the minute the power goes back on. Um, so just a good word, if everyone could please spread that, you know, make sure you're off until you're back on and then slowly check everything and put it back on. Uh, generators need to be used outside. We've had a couple of cases where people are getting carbon monoxide as a result of putting it inside their house or in their garage. People think their garages are separate. Garage is not separate. It's connected to the house. So um, in, in summation, you know, thanks again to staff for a great job. And um, I was assured today, as I know the residents here, by FPNL high up, and I, I literally was on the phone for an hour, that they have guaranteed Broward County that by Sunday, almost every resident will have their power back on. I have no idea how they're going to do it, but they once again confirmed that for me again today, and I'm going to hold them to that, and I know I personally will be uh, on the phone with them a million times if they don't meet their word on that one. Thank you, Mayor. Absolutely. Andy. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, most everything I had wanted to say has already been said. Uh, I just I just want to compliment the staff and, and tell them all how appreciative I am of the, of the efforts that they put forth. And, and, I, and I want to especially thank Sandy for her leadership as our emergency manager. For those of you who don't know it, Sandy actually worked for Broward County Emergency Management before she came to the town. So this is not something that's new to her. It's something she's very familiar with, and, and the town has certainly been able to benefit by her experience. The other thing I'll tell you is, with the exception of the mayor, I'm sure all of you were in during the storm and during the curfew, and were not out wandering around and causing problems. <laughs> what you don't know is the Davy Police, in, in their emergency operations center, had a generator problem. And they had no power in their emergency operations center. So we had, Sandy had a lot of company and she was very well protected during the storm because we probably had 30 to 40 officers here during the worst of the storm and in this building. In this with, room. Where you're sitting This now, was a dormitory. Here, the hallways, <laughs> the conference rooms, there were cots and air mattresses everywhere in this building. So they were all here, they were ready to go. The minute the winds died down, they were able to get out and, and get out in the community and keep an eye on things out there. So I uh, just want to thank uh, once again the staff and Sandy for their job and uh, council. Don't don't forget Emily sleeping on a cot. Oh, Emily, Emily stayed. She didn't go to the EOC. She stayed okay. home. However, she maintained power throughout. So all during the storm, our incidents, anything happened in town was getting entered in the county's web EOC because she she was working on it the entire Aww. time. So that's how that's thank how she you. spent the storm. <laughs> So that, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Ordinance number eight. Russell. This is an ordinance of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending the definitions, future land use, element, and transportation element of the Town of Southwest Ranches comprehensive plan, providing for transmittal to the State Land Planning Agency, providing for recertification by the Broward County Planning Council, providing for conflict, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Mayor, this is uh, here for a uh, second reading of the council. Jeff Kadams uh, came tonight, so thank you, Jeff, uh, Storm and everything. Um, and uh, again, this is to prevent uh, cut through streets from forming in the town by uh, individuals who may be buying up enough property to connect cut through streets. So it's here for your approval. And we've already adopted the, the code version of this. This is the comp plan version. All right, nothing else? Public comment. public comment. Any public comment on this issue? Debbie Green, 199th Avenue. I'm going to ask you if I if you can make an exception since I just missed public comment because yeah, I'll let you do I it messed up and I never changed my I meeting date. I went on the calendar to see what the agenda for We're going to let you do it, but we're going to let you do it at the end of the meeting. 
We're going to let you. The meeting was uh, no. Debbie, the way the, the, the rules of procedure work is at the end of the meeting, provided we're not 11 at o'clock, anyone who hasn't spoken can speak. Okay. So, so you're going to get to speak. Okay. Probably Thank a you. half hour you'll be able to speak. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and anybody else who wants to speak? Who hasn't spoken? <laughs> Any public comment on this matter, though? See no public comment. Public comment is closed. Back to us. No issues? Any comments? We're good. We're good. Wait till D gets back. Waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> we ready? Yep. On ordinance number eight, did you have any uh, comments, D? Nobody else did? No. Okay. Call the question. Council Member Schroeder? <coughs> yes. Council Member Fiskelly? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breakers? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passed. Number nine. This is an ordinance of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending the text of the future land use element and the definitions of the Town of Southwest Ranches comprehensive plan by revising the definitions and plan implementation provisions relating to community facilities, providing for transmittal to the State Land Planning Agency, providing for recertification by the Broward County Planning Council, providing for conflict, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Mayor, this is again on uh, second reading uh, for the council, and I thank Jeff for being here again and helping draft this one. This is a item that's been strongly advocated by the comp plan board for months, uh, months that we've been dealing with uh, the state and getting approval to get approved. Um, this complies with state law. There's now a discrepancy between state and federal law, which is creating issues. But this reduce, I guess I'm done. <laughs> this reduces the number of special uh, uh, beds and special residential facilities from eight to six, which is the lowest that we are permitted to go under state law. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. See any public comment? No public comment. Public comment is closed. Back to us. Call the question. Council Member Schroeder? Yes. Council Member Fiskelly? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breakers? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. Number 10, please. An ordinance of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending the Town of Southwest Ranches Unified Land Development Code, Article 10, entitled Definition of Terms, to define the term composting or mulching operation. Amending Article 55, entitled M Manufacturing and Industrial District, to revise the list of permitted, conditional, and prohibited uses and the limitations of uses pertaining to composting, mulching, recycling, and other waste processing, providing for codification, providing for conflict, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Mayor, this comes to you, and Council, this comes to you from the local planning agency with a recommendation of approval. This is the item to prohibit mulching operations uh, when you bring in materials from other places to your establishment. Is the comment that was made? All comments are incorporated by reference, right. as always. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Any public comment? Seeing no public comment, public comment is closed. Back to us. Any questions up here? No. Nope. Call the question. Council Member Schroeder? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breitkruz? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. Number 11. An ordinance of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending the Town of Southwest Ranches Unified Land Development Code, Article 45, entitled Agricultural and Rural Districts, and Article 50, entitled Commercial Districts, Article 55, entitled M Manufacturing and Industrial District, Article 60, entitled CF Community Facility District, and Article 65, entitled Recreation and Open Space District, to require that the finished side of fences face outward, providing for exceptions, providing for codification, providing for conflict, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Can I jump in here for a second Go right ahead. before anything gets done? This one's kind of a new one on me. I, I was wondering if you, anybody I'll here would be interested in tabling this. To I, I'd like to explain it. If there could be a motion uh, uh, some way. a motion in a second. Then, we'll and then I'll explain it, and then you can decide if you want to table it, table it, but I'll explain what happened. All right, all right. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. L let me tell you how this came up. Uh, I never thought the town would need a, an, an ordinance like this until a code enforcement item. Apparently, there's two sides to every fence. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought it was. Unless it's look, Jay look, Lee, four sides, but yeah. more really skinny. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, some residents have decided that they want to look at the prettier side of the fence and stick their neighbors 
with the ugly side of the fence, okay? And this has come up at code enforcement on occasions now where residents have really gotten to massive battles because their neighbor decided to, I don't want to use that word, uh, not be nice to them by installing a fence that's beautiful to them but horrific to the neighbor, okay? And this is happening. This is real life happening. This ordinance is something that actually I think I thought was already in the books and Jeff thought it was on the books, but when we looked, we realized, oh my God, there's nothing here that requires the nice side of the fence from looking out. This doesn't prohibit you from doing a nice side looking in also, but this says that you can't mess with your neighbor and have them looking at a horrific fence or a bad side of a fence, you know, to, to appease you. That's why this is on the agenda, because there are two sides to every fence, and some residents were making it really, really nice on their side with rock decorations and, you know, all this beauty, and then sticking their neighbor with the totally unfinished, the you know, four by four, four, by four just holding it up and saying, ha, there's your fence, enjoy it. The dirty side. The dirty side. <laughs> the dirty side of the storm. <laughs> right. So this is here for your consideration and approval. Hopefully with this explanation now, you better understand why. The mayor was at the meeting where one of this came up and actually asked for this to be on the agenda at that time. It was months ago now. It took us a while to get this because of other priorities, but this is a real life town issue that is occurring. Yeah, and it takes two readings to approve. Uh, Gary? I have a question. Well, Gary, Gary, oh. Gary go had one first, but go ahead, D. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead with your question. I mean, I don't like to look at a chain lane fence. How are you going to fix that? Well, that's both on both sides. It's the same that's on both same sides. On both sides. So, so that that's you're not eliminating chain link fences, but that's the same on both sides. But how how do you go to a place that makes fence and say, oh, by the way, you have to finish it on the other side? Does this go on in other municipalities? This this ordinance is what 99% of the municipalities have, which is the nice side of the fence faces outward, whether it's outward to the street, outward to your neighbor, outward anywhere. It doesn't prohibit you from doing a nice side inside also. You can double face the fence. But this is just saying that you can't be rude to your neighbor or the aesthetics of the street by having the ugly side facing outward. I mean, you can have it all finished on both sides, and yes. you could go to their side and write some graffiti on it and say, you know, hey. No, but but at that time, they'd be, I mean, there's issues here, but, you know, it's, it's basically a very simple ordinance. It just says that, if you're installing a fence, you can't only you you can't have your fence being that your side is the better looking side. You have to flip it so that it's well. well after outside. this hurricane, that's going to be I think a real big issue because I think there's a lot of people going to be replacing fences. Uh, Andy and I actually spoke about that today. That we're working with CAP to try to figure out if there's a way to reduce the permit fees for fence replacements as a result of the the hurricane. But I know for a fact that I drove up and down volunteer three times today, and there's a lot of fences down there. And if those fences are turned so that the nicer side is facing the residents, the whole look of that street's going to change because those are all beautiful wood fences. Yep. So there, there is a rhyme or reason to this because, okay. you know, the way it currently is a resident could only have the nice side facing them. Uh, Jeff Kadams, uh, uh, how common is it in other municipalities? I, I'm just curious. Um, it, you can't rely on neighbors to be good neighbors. Most of them are, but occasionally some are not. Um, we have today more fencing styles available to us than 20 years ago, let's say, with the, especially with the, the PVC fences. They look the same on both sides. A lot of fences look the same on both sides, but the wood fences, the, the, the privacy fences are the notorious ones that, that uh, trigger these ordinances in most municipalities because there really is a finished side and an unfinished side. And right. it's literally, if you Google good neighbor fence, you'll have uh, 100 pages of hits uh, just on cities that have adopted these or calls for cities to adopt. There was a New York Times article on this that why should we have to legislate this? But gosh, we have to legislate this because people will stick it to their neighbor. So we do have a we do have a provision in here, however, that um, if it's if the fence isn't facing a right of way, if it's uh, facing a side property line or a rear property line, and the neighbor on the other side says, "Hey, let's both do that," or "I don't care," 
then they can get a waiver. But uh, you can't force your neighbor to look at the unfinished structural side of a fence with this ordinance. Okay. Gary? Yeah, my, it, it, this it sort of came out of left field, is, 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 but Keith's really explained the rationale behind it, which is really what I was kind of, I was kind of looking for yesterday and the day before when I was trying to read this in between uh, all the, uh, the hurricane fund that we were having. Um, yeah, you know, it's on a second reading. I, I wanted to think about it. That's why I was questioning the, the, the whole table issue, you know, uh, uh, but it, it goes to a second reading, so I'm, I'm okay with it. We can modify it, uh, you know, at, if we need to do that. And in where, where I have a, a little bit of a problem with it is, is the, the eye of the beholder kind of deal. It's, you know, what, what, what looks good to me, rural, r rustic, you know, might not be to somebody else, but you know, I can see how where there's always a finished side for yeah. the fencing manufacturer. Well, I know, I know, but I just yeah. uh, I can I can see where one neighbor who is really upset with another neighbor can use this as a tool to uh, you know for the big get even. I can understand that. So I th but I but I uh, what I caution is we'd be very careful here because this is this is almost like okay you can't put out a pink mailbox if you want you know that that's kind of where I'm looking at this down the road. And or maybe a blue I'm just reading this totally, you know, but um, just want to be very careful. We do have another reading coming on it, so uh, I, I I don't advocate tabling it right now. We, it has its own time sequence. To it. So. so you're comfortable moving forward? Yeah, yeah. We so we have another reading, so yep. you know, <coughs> we, we can I can beat it to death if I, when I think about it some more. <laughs> okay. Public comment. I saw everybody chomping at the bit on that one. <laughs> Just uh, one caveat, as an attorney would say. Uh, back when Don and Robin were my great neighbors on the north side, uh, Don was replacing the fence, and I split the cost with him. And I ate the dirty side intentionally for him because he had livestock, horses, and other things that tend to get hung up on the posts and the fasteners. So uh, there might be some little thing in the ordinance that you can put in there that if it's mutually agreed upon between neighbors for the purpose of John, animal it's safety. In, it's in there. It's in there. Okay. It, uh, neighbors can waive it. It's in there. All right. Great. So if your neighbor waves it, it's fine. Is it really, you know, you start hanging uh, hog wire and stuff great. on the fences. You need to protect the horses. They're, they're really, uh, they can get hung up Jeff on Jeff saw to that, and that's why it's in there. Newell no, Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Forty years ago when I put up the, my fencing for my animals and my horses and stuff, Broward County made me put the three posts, three board fence, creosote board fence on the outside. Well, I didn't get the first two sections done before the horse decided to rub and the boards went <laughs> pop. If you don't put the boards on the inside, it'll pop the nails every time. And that's the good side. You've got to have agricultural exception. If the person is doing it for horses, cattle, and cattle, they'll just lean on it till the board <laughs> breaks anyway. So, and you've got the hog wire fences, which is the graded different sizes of the squares, wire fencing. People don't want to see those, a lot of people that are moving out here. They're going, that is an ugly fence. You're giving. So we've got to have that where if you're doing it for the animals, you've got to have saying it's for the animals, no problem whatsoever because we have our animals in our town and we're going to protect those people that have those animals in our town and that's the way it's got to be. I'm The ones that put up the Home Depot, you know, uh, wood fencing, yeah, I can see putting the good side to the outside. But not the animal fencing, not the three board posts or four board posts. And I fought with Broward County on that for months before they finally gave me an exception. Thank you. Hey, hey Newell, 
Um, we thought of that under 604.50 Florida statutes, and I'll write it down for you. You can come back to my office later. I'll show you. There's already an exemption in the Florida statutes that it allows someone for agricultural purposes to not follow this provision. Even if they don't have ag exemption? If they have horses and cattle and things that are capable of them being classified as agricultural uses, they're exempt from fences, you know, from this provision. But, you know, I'll show it to you, and then we can discuss it on second reading. Okay. If, if it's there, then, yeah. you know. I'll show it to you. We'll go let's just it. put it into this ordinance yeah. so code knows it to begin with. And, and by the yeah. way, I don't have any issues in, in a friendly amendment to the ordinance to incorporate that, and Jeff and I can work on that language between first and second reading. Yeah, because he's 100%, 100% correct as Great. far as those horses popping those boards every single time. Great. Uh, Bill Sunday again from uh, 170th Avenue. Uh, the nice side, uh, I'm assuming, is the nice flat side on a wooden fence, and the um, ugly side is the one with the where the, it's nailed to the post. Um, actually, I got I got a wooden fence up, which I put the ugly side on my side, and then I painted it with the recycled paint when we used to be part of the county recycle program gray and then I use that where I put my birds and reindeer and other things I build because uh, you have a nice little ledge you can sit them on and just screw them into the fence so you know uh, and the wooden fence is mostly because I didn't get along with my neighbor uh, so uh, it served two purposes He did it the right way, by the way. Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, any additional public comment? Seeing no additional public comment, public comment is closed. Back to us. Yeah, I got a, uh, just a comment, you know, based on some of the stuff I'm hearing. Um, there's a lot of fence damage that's going that's gone on here in the last uh, 48 hours, you know, and there's going to be a lot of people replacing. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing pe people replacing fences already. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm still trying to, I'm still going through the sticker shock phase of, figuring out what what I've lost <laughs> I'm still picking up yeah there's fencing there's fencing all across the neighborhood you know that kind of thing so um, you know it, we, we need to see how this plays out you know with a lot of uh, I've got hog wire everywhere <laughs> in, in down my street and you know stuff like that so uh, I, I just want to urge some caution here that's all you know, moving forward okay Jay. call the question I, 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 but before the calling, I just want to confirm that when we bring it back, we're going to add some language in about agricultural uses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and I don't know. Go ahead. Gary, you may want to have a conversation with, uh, I'm sure you probably will. Keep, we'll be a part you know, of it. So that <laughs> you know, the irony we, is second Because I think you've got a valid point. I think you've got a valid point, and this is a critical time for our town for this particular thing, which is yeah, the point you're making. Like the, and so that's 48 hours uh, of kind of change, you know. Yeah, let's let's make sure we do it right. Yeah, that's all. I'm, that's all I'm saying. Let's think this through. That's why I came across with the very first comment I made. You know, well, we're, since we're well, let's get this. I was going to say you mentioned you were talking about permitting and uh, fencing stuff moving forward. Uh, do we know where we are with that? Because I haven't heard that discussion at all. <coughs> Andy and I just had it today. I don't know where. All he's right. Saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you there are a lot of people that probably aren't going to pull a permit just to put their fence back up just because of what they had. Uh, so I'm going to kind of say that I really don't want, if they did it right, I don't want to go back and fine them either for not coming back to get a permit well, to they're, begin they're, with. This, this would not apply to existing fences or just repairs to an existing fence. Okay. This is for new fences going forward. Well, I get that and understand that, but one quarter of my fence line is gone and three quarters are up <laughs> so but that's a repair i i'm i'm sure they'll process your permit very quickly yeah i'm sure <laughs> charging you double yeah okay call the question council member schroeder yes council member Fisichelli? yes council member jablonski yes vice mayor breakers yes mayor mckay yes motion passed Second. okie doke Yes. 
12 is an ordinance of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending the Town of Southwest Ranches Code of Ordinances, Section 10-23, definitions on the Article 2, Tree Preservation, and Chapter 10, Environment, to change the definition of nuisance tree, amending the Town of Southwest Ranches Unified Land Development Code, Section 075-060, Plant Material, and Article 75, Landscaping Requirements, to change the list of prohibited plants and to require removal of such plants from construction sites prior to issuance of a building permit. Amending section 075-110 single family requirements to require removal of prohibited plant species from construction sites prior to issuance of a building permit for a principal structure. Providing for codification, providing for conflict, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Keith and Malay's. Yeah, I'll wait for the motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. <coughs> Mayor, and, and thanks to Jeff again for this. This is another one that was born directly by yourself out of a code enforcement meeting, um, numerous code enforcement meetings. First, our list. Gate Chapel. Uh, yes, in Gate Chapel. First, our list of uh, uh, nuisance trees was completely wrong. Um, it needed updating. It needs to refer back to the state's list, um, which may be amended from time to time. For that, that was the first correction that needed to occur. The second issue is what was happening is residents were getting permits for new homes. This is primarily new homes. This isn't someone doing a fence or a pool or those sort of things. But they were getting permits for new homes, and they were told, you need to remove the Maluka, the Bishofia, the Australian Pines on your property, um, you know, prior to us giving you a CO for the property. Okay, fine. They'd go ahead and build their home. Then, lo and behold, they never removed the trees. And then when they were told to remove the trees, they said, well, now we can't remove the trees because the home's blocking the tree, and for us to remove the, the tree would create damage to the home. So they ended up just not doing anything. So we had case after case in code enforcement where either trees were falling, trees were leaning over on other people's property lines that they were went back to the original approval and said, my neighbor shouldn't have even gotten their certificate of occupancy until they removed the trees by virtue of their permit. So to prevent the he said, she said that we're, we're seeing, we said forget it. For these new construction projects like this, just remove your evasive exotics prior to starting construction on your new home. And that way we don't have an issue. You've removed those <laughs> bad trees and, and there's not an issue. So that's why it's before you for your consideration to avoid the problem that we're seeing at code. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Any public comment on this matter? New Hollingsworth, 198th Avenue. Am I to understand that the permit for construction is to be granted, but prior to construction, they have to remove the trees? How are you going to stop construction if the permit has already been granted? It has to be done prior to the granting of the permit because once the permit is granted, construction may begin. Well, it says prior to issuance of a building permit for construction, then okay. you can remove the trees. Prior to issuance. Okay. Yes. That's entirely different than what was said. Sorry for the confusion. If any. Any additional public comment? Seeing no public, uh, no additional public comment. I public see December com smiling. It's, it's I think because she loves. He's on his game. He does what he's doing. Yeah. He's, public yeah, comment he is, loves this ordinance. Public comment <laughs> is closed. Uh, back to us. Anything? No. Steve? I yeah. I, I just have a question. So, are we saying that the conversation went like, okay, the CO was contingent upon removal of these exotics. They built the house. The exotics were still there. They get to the point where the, the CO Had is ready to be trees. issued. And the homeowner said, I can't do it because it's going to hurt this new house I just built. And somebody said, OK. It, it won't yes. <laughs> Why in the world would we say OK? That's, okay. that's the part of this that, that is yep. baffling to me. Yep. It, okay, well, then tear down your house, take out the trees, and rebuild it. That should be the answer. If that's, no. if that's you know, then they're going to, you know what they're going to do? They're going to come up with a way to do it without tearing down their house. Uh, another big they're gonna, problem. I just don't understand, you know, how we can have an ordinance in place where it lays it out that this is how you're supposed to do it, and then we don't enforce it. 
because somebody said it would affect my house, believe me. Not believe only that. Believe me. I've had machines on people's property that had this much room, and we could get the truth Exactly. Out. Listen, exactly. there's ways, but, but the other thing they say is they either have a mortgage or a bu budget or whatever, and it's they didn't get a price ahead of time on what it was going to cost. They just moved forward. That's what's and happening. And then, then what happens, they said, what do you mean it's going to be $30,000? That, and that is exactly what <laughs> happens, and yeah. I, I get that. That's what happens. It's, it's put off to the end. The money is gone, and that's still there. But if they can't get the CO, I, I still say, why do we give them the CO? Why do we give them the CO? Why do, why do we allow I'm not their in that problem department. to become <laughs> our problem? <laughs> I want to make this clear because you're looking at me. But uh, 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 it, it's not my CO, but I'll tell you the, the secondary. Under, but you I understand the issue. Uh, but I'll tell you the secondary issue that comes with this is then we have the situation where the resident moves into the house anyway. The, the town without, the, a CO. This, without a CO. They move in and they're living there for six months. Six months, years, yeah. without paying the taxes yeah. on it because they don't have a CO on the property. So the, the, there are so many issues that we've seen as a result of this that this is the, the all of these ordinances, the last one and this one are by virtue of someone going around the rules and, and getting away with it and our ability to play catch up to try to prevent it from happening again. Yeah. So these are real life examples I know of things they are. that happen. I know Vice they are. Mayor, I, know that. And I, let me, I yes. have another perspective go ahead. No, go ahead. on that. Go ahead, go ahead Jeff. Uh, I can tell you that um, in, in 25 years of, of it administering the permit process and in see, overseeing all of it, you've got the building code and you've got the zoning code. This is the zoning code. The building code is a code unto itself, and they cannot condition a CO on a zoning issue. If it meets the building code, the building official is supposed to issue that permit. And this is a problem that we've run into in numerous cities, uh, and we, we, we wind up fighting about it at CO time, and the building official says, I'm obligated to issue the CO. Mm -hmm. It's not my problem if they haven't met your zoning requirement. You should have taken care of it before they got to this point. All right, well, that makes sense. Thank yeah. you. Good answer. Thank you. That, 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 that's, yeah, that's, Good answer, Jeff. Thank you, you can still go after I'm him. I'm glad you came out tonight. You, <laughs> yeah. Listen, you can still go after him for with code enforcement. <laughs> right, but we don't want to go yeah. there. Okay. That's what we've been doing. Yeah, yeah, Turned yeah, into code yeah. enforcement, this, and then we're stuck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. I'm, I'm, let, me, let me be clear. I'm 100% behind this ordinance. I just, I just needed to understand how oh, the heck. To yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. So call the question. Schroeder? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breakers? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes, absolutely. Motion passes. <laughs> 13, please. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving the third modification to the agreement between the Town of Southwest Ranches and weekly asphalt paving for roadway repair and traffic sign maintenance services. Approving an additional one-year term, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into the third modification to the agreement and providing an effective date. Mayor, this is the final time that you can extend Weekly's agreement for uh, roadway repair, so it's being brought to you for your approval. Yep. Motion to approve. Second. Any public comment? Seeing no public comment, public comment is closed. Any back to us? Any questions? Uh, just want to make a comment. I think they're going to be very busy here. <laughs> uh, I, I'm still trying to find a street sign that's right. 90 Great. degree to the ground right now. I, they're all over the place. Yeah. You know, so. All right. Call the question, please. Councilmember Schroeder? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breikruz? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. 14, please. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving a revocable license agreement with Broward County to allow the town's entranceway signs to be located within Broward County's right-of-way, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to execute the agreement and providing an effective date. I make a motion to approve. Second. Any public comment on this matter? Seeing no public comment, public comment is closed. Back to the council. Any additional questions? No, we're good. Call the question. Councilmember Schroeder? Yes. Councilmember Fisichelli? Yes. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breikers? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. 15, please. 
A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving an agreement in the amount of $90,905.20 with Williams Paving, Inc. to complete the Southwest 54th Place and Southwest 195th Terrace drainage improvements. Approving a budget amendment to the fiscal year 2016-2017 budget for drainage improvements, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to execute a purchase order and providing an effective date. Motion to approve. Second it. Any public comment on this matter? Noah Hollingsworth, 199th <laughs> Avenue. I want to thank the council for being so expeditious in doing phase three of a 2008 project because that's exactly what this is. This is phase three of a project that was approved by the council in 2008. It has been on my orphan list for 10 years. And I'll be able to scratch it off when it is finished, but not before. The other thing is, Williams Paving, I'd like to know what the $5.20 is for. Thank you. I want everybody to realize the reason uh, Vice Mayor Breakers did not vote on that matter uh, or make a motion is because it affects his backyard. Well, I'm going I'm to say a few words. Uh, yeah, okay. Really? <laughs> Your backyard? Well, I guess I'll say something. No now. additional public comments. Was back yeah, I was waiting so for Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to. Uh, this, this, this particular project uh, ties, uh, I live on 195th. This is at 54th, uh, I'm at 5120, so it's, uh, it's a little ways, three-tenths of a mile from my house. Um, it connects uh, uh, Frontier Trails Park to a drainage project, as Newell stated, that had three phases originally. Um, phase one uh, drained from 195th to 196th to um, the canal on the uh, far side of 196. Uh, phase two basically uh, put in some of the infrastructure that would allow for um, the completion of the project, um, did not have as immediate drainage uh, impact on that until this piece is done, phase three. Um, and um, this piece here will allow for the drainage from um, Frontier Trails to go all the way through to the canal on the uh, west side of 196. So it will have a huge impact on uh, uh, the properties, um, uh, not only on 195th, but also on 193rd and um, that whole area there. Um, my backyard does not actually, uh, um, uh, is not directly on this. However, my backyard drains into Frontier Trails and this drains out Frontier Trails. So uh, it certainly will help me and I wanna make sure that that's out in the open and uh, it is there. Um, so although it's three tenths of a mile from my property, um, it does, uh, it is going to uh, hopefully affect that whole area of which I am part of. Um, and it's been, as Newell said, a project that's been out on the books for a long time. And, um, and uh, I've worked uh, very hard not to push this project <laughs> because um, you know I know no, there's a lot of because because there's a lot of projects that are important in this town and um, and I, I appreciate that it, it moved at its own pace and that it's now worked its way to the top um, I think it is a worthy project and um, uh, so I look forward to there's still there's still more to be done um, but the, the remaining parts are really frontier trails type projects that will allow Frontier Trails then to drain better and to turn into a nice park and, uh, and the whole nine yards. So, uh, uh, but it's a worthy project and I appreciate that it's uh, before the council. Yeah, I just, Go ahead, Gary. Go. Oh, I, I just want to chime in that uh, uh, th this was a project when, when I was chair, <laughs> chair of the <laughs> drainage board a long time ago <laughs> and it was even dis discussed before that. So this, this is the uh, remaining component to, to that's going to drain that whole area, which was 
you know, one of the reasons why we purchased uh, Frontier Trail is to use it as a passive park to, uh, you know, to help with the drainage. And it abuts right up to uh, Pembroke Pines uh, wetland area, if, if memory serves correctly. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's a very necessary component for that whole area of country estates to uh, convey the water to the South Broward drainage canal on 196, if I've got all the facts straight in my head. And uh, it, I fully support this, obviously. I made the motion. Uh, and, it, and it needs to be done. And we're now finally completing it 11, uh, it's actually probably closer to like 12, 15 years since we first started discussing the, the whole phasing in project. And this is, this is a good, com this, this, this wraps kind of wraps that up. There is still some more that has to be done to that area. But um, this will affect a very large area. And so I just want to mention that. So. Um, one, I just want to get this on the record, Keith. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to stay stated. I was going to stay here for the vote. I was letting the council finish. But I, I, after your disclosure, I do find that the uh, the voting on this item does not propose does not pose a voting conflict to yourself because of the fact that it benefits, as uh, Councilmember Jablonski stated again, uh, the community at large. It is not a benefit that inures solely to yourself. And as such, under the law, you're actually required to vote on it. There is no vote in conflict. Thank you. Okay. Good. Awesome. Call the question, please. Council Member Schroeder? Uh, yes. <laughs> Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breakers? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. 16 first. All right. Yeah, Mayor, in addition to yep. the, uh, minutes. the minutes, we do have two walk on resolution items that deal with the, the storm, and then Debbie Green is at the end of that. So yep. you could do the minutes first, then the two walk on items, and then Debbie Green. Okay. All right. <laughs> Approval of the minutes for August 10th, yeah, 217, regular <laughs> meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Any public correction? Because you do correct this at time. <laughs> Seeing none, call the question. Councilmember Schroeder? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breakers? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Russell, if you could please read the first walk on resolution item into the record. This is a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, ratifying the Town Administrator's execution of the third addendum to the agreement with O'Brien's Response Management, Inc. for disaster debris monitoring services and providing an effective date. Thank you. Mayor, if there's a motion, I'll explain the item. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All right. Um, so we were unfortunately faced with Irma, and uh, you'll it's don't on? believe everything yeah. you hear at uh, Publix. I personally had my wind meter, and I clocked over 75 miles. And as a result of that, uh, FEMA has uh, said that they will reimburse the town for vegetative uh, debris removal. The problem is because we're not Harvey or whatever the uh, storm was before then, we're not up to that 90% level. It looks like right now we're only 75% level unless the federal government uh, comes forward with another bill to modify that. That being said, uh, we have an agreement with our monitoring service company named O'Brien's, and they make sure that everything is going by law, that we're going to get the maximum amount of reimbursement um, legally allowed based on everyone picking up the weights and all the other stuff that they do. The problem that Marty uh, realized quickly and I realized quickly is that a portion of their debris monitoring could be rejected, meaning that FEMA could say we're not finding that weight to be accurate or we're not finding, you know, some paperwork to be accurate. O'Brien's gets paid based upon their reporting. So as a result of that, we wanted an immediate uh, modification of their agreement that once we enact them, if they submit a form saying there's two tons uh, of waste and, and we're paying them based on that, but FEMA only grants one ton of waste, that we're not paying them that additional portion that FEMA rejects. So we quickly uh, negotiated with their legal counsel a, an amendment to the agreement, which Andy signed before the agreement was, uh, uh, before they were activated to state that um, if FEMA rejects any of your claims, you're not getting paid on the por portion that FEMA rejects. Right. So obviously it's a necessary portion. It protects us. It's here for your approval. Okay. Any public comment on this matter? Seeing no public comment, back to us. Steve. 
Just comment. Just uh, if memory serves me well, these are the folks that we contracted with before that um, did the post hurricane investigation and mm -hmm. did were very instrumental in very reducing small. a very large bill into a very mm -hmm. small bill, as I recall. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So we have a good history with them, yep. and they've been a good yep. a good partner of ours. Yeah. Okay. Call the question. Councilmember Schroeder. Yes. Councilmember Fisichelli? Yes. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breikers? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Russell, final meeting Second item one. before uh, Debbie Green. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, ratifying the Town Administrator's execution of the third modification to the agreement with A Superior Towing, Inc. for post-storm post disaster towing and wrecking services and providing an effective date. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, fortunately, I don't think we really had to use this yet, but it was uh, entered into uh, right before Irma, Irma hit just in case. What this means is that if there were police tows because vehicles were underwater, vehicles went in canals, vehicles turned over as a result of the storm, that our towing provider could immediately come in, do the tows, and any money that we re got reimbursed by FEMA uh, for those okay, toes would go to them. Yep. They would not get a dime not reimbursed by FEMA, which is what was negotiated and agreed to by them. So we modified their agreement quickly under Andy's emergency powers to make sure that they had that service in place just in case we needed it. Fortunately, we do not, but now it's part of their contract, which is good for the future anyway. Yep. Awesome. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any comment, public comment on this matter? Seeing no public comment, public comment is closed. Back to the council. Anybody else have anything? See nothing else, call the question. Council Member Schroeder? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Breikers? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Debbie Green is the final item. <laughs> <laughs> It'll never happen again. I will change the date of the meeting. I went online to, see, to be prepared for tomorrow and like, oh, it's right now. Um, right. So thank you. Check. <laughs> thank you. So I just want to commend everybody and the staff and everyone for, you know, the, the preparations and all throughout the storm. And also appreciate that before the storm, the gate on 199th was open just to be sure that if there was any, you know, we need to get emergency vehicles or just that we, you know, to help prevent the chance of us being trapped, which as the case was, there was a period of time where there was a tree down in Griffin and a tree down across 50th. So thank goodness that that gate was open, whether it was on our side or Pembroke Pines. Um, but the the other is now, and I think we had a you know had a conversation yesterday. And yesterday I got a call from another volunteer trying wanting to move a tree that was blocking two two o two on the Pembroke sign side of the grate. And could I please get some volunteers maybe to to help get that road cleared? And we got it done. And as Mayor said, it was done in like an hour. Um, and that was you know to get that road clear to make it so that when the vehicle the whatever they are, the vehicles that come through to pick up the debris, that the roads were clear. And then all of a sudden today, the gate on 199th was closed. And one of the wonderful things that's happened is all the neighbors have been helping neighbors. It didn't matter what our address said, Southwest Ranches, or it said Pembroke Pines. You know, our area is very different than the rest. We're a block. It's one complete block that's Southwest Ranches and Pembroke Pines. So there's some neighbors that have the buggies that can go, whether it's in Pembroke Pines or Southwest Ranches, that want to help their neighbors to load the truck stuff and bring it to the front. Now we've hindered that. And then I can't tell you how many trucks today, whether it was FPNL, AT&T, Comcast, of trucks that have come down and then had to stop and turn around. I mean, gas is you know not easy to come by, and now we're forcing these vehicles trying to help in the restoration and causing them to go miles out of the way. So I'm just asking you to, you know, ser to please seriously consider maybe leaving it open for the next couple of weeks no. just just until the you know the restoration is complete. So I mean it's cuz right now the town is hindering that to have all these different service vehicles coming down the street and back cuz how many AT&Ts for all the different calls and Comcast? There was several. And just again, you know, we're trying to help our neighbors. It doesn't matter what city, and I don't know that another couple weeks really. Um, um, so I would just ask you that you consider that. Thank you. Okay, it's up here for discussion. Uh, I, I, I don't disagree with their statement. Uh, I think it'll make it easier for FEMA and pick up and bulk and repair and FPNL and AT&T and Comcast. Uh, 
I just think the dilemma there is that we don't have a clicker for everybody. You know, you can't mm -hmm. pass out because a lot of them are out of state people and whatnot. Sure. And they don't have know the logistics or any of the other stuff. They either know they can get through or they can't get through. Right. So uh, I did open them myself personally on Saturday at about uh, 1220. And uh, I closed them today with Andy this afternoon. One of them didn't get closed because the power was out. Yeah. So I don't know that when the power gets on that it'll close directly. But uh, I would tell you on the easier side to make things happen and get it done smoothly that my opinion would be that it, that, uh, it would be very accommodating to leave them open for a short period of time. Uh, I would say basically once our powers back up within town that we close them again. My own personal opinion. Uh, I'm only one person up here, but I'm looking for input from you guys. Um, I, I do have input on this I'd like to give. I'm wondering, and I'm not just saying we do have another resident from 199th who has an opposing opinion. Um, you think? <laughs> <laughs> I'm suspecting. and. And the president of the country is safe too, right? Well, I, that's why, I mean, I don't that, that was a final, po I mean, you all can do whatever you want, but that, from a, 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 po a procedure that was a public comment from uh, um, I, a right, final well, public comment, it. but do whatever you want. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll, let me let me do this. I mean, I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, Debbie could have been the last one at public comment too, and then that would have been the end of one. Right, so so um, there'll be more public comment next meeting. Um, uh, I'll, I'll give my, my opinion on this. Then that my, my opinion is that we need a policy on when that gate should be. I think we, I think today the policy, as best I understand it, is that it's a life safety issue, and that when there is a life safety issue, the gate is opened, and when that life safety issue goes away, the gate is closed. Um, but I think there's a valid point that Debbie is making that um, there is situations where it may not be, where we might need to extend that yeah, for a short well, period of yeah, time. The mayor said, uh, recommended, you know, power on it, all those. And I, I think that, that generally I agree with that statement. I think that makes sense. I'm concerned about one house that is extended, you know, there for an extended period of time. Um, where it's not really necessary because there's one house, you know, it may be somewhere right near near Griffin Road, you know, or something like that, and yet it's still there. So there's going to be exceptions to it, you know. I, I guess, I guess, I guess we need to give. I need to give some more thought to it. Um, I definitely want more resident input on it, but I think it's a valid point that um, to facilitate the needs of that neighborhood that it, we look at what the proper uh, protocol should be for closing that. Um, I, I, you know, almost, I, I can't think of any situation where it would be over a week where it should be left open. You know, I can't think of any, you know, I mean, I guess it could happen somehow, but you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not in any way suggesting that this is an open-ended uh, situation from my perspective, and I'm just speaking for myself. But um, I do think that there are situations where it, you know, it might make sense to extend it for a day or two as, um, you know, M maybe the crisis is still underway. Yeah, maybe you could just talk to a couple of the residents in, in the Pembroke Pine side and see if. Right. But but they're actually on the other side. You you're being serviced. They're coming to you guys. They're just not going. <coughs> you need to come up to the mic if you're going to speak. But but what I'm saying, Debbie, is they might not want so, it. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because they're on the other I side. Do a debate here or not? No, good. all I was saying is, as a community, these service vehicles are tr they're make they're trying to make the service calls to restore the power or whatever it is, whatever that service is, south south of the gate right they're not it's not the resident it's they're they they're trying to make a service call to restore everyone down 199th 
to get back to normal. And these people that are coming, people have called from all over, whether it's other states or, or other counties, they don't know that that's, there's a gate and that street doesn't close. It, I was just asking maybe for a week or whatever, just to extend that period of time to enable, not hinder the restoration to get, otherwise I don't understand what the urgency was and why I got sunburned and to get all the, to get volunteers to clear 202 on the other side of the gate because that was going to hinder the debris pickup. I don't understand. That was the thought process. I, I don't under so I don't understand how this is any different to leave it open another as you know, Councilmember Bright who said maybe a week just to help in you know so we, the town doesn't hinder the restoration just let the because those people don't the service companies aren't aware that there's a gate in the goat. The, the road doesn't go. But but what I'm saying is they might welcome that as well and say, yeah, let's keep it open because we're being serviced too, so. Well, <clears throat> I'm not saying that the gate should, I'm just. Temporarily. Temporarily, for but a week. But I'm saying the, the, the people on the Pembroke Pine side might agree 100% with you and say, yeah, can we leave it open right now till we all get serviced and. Exactly. The debris is picked up and, and, and we're good to go. And then we can. That's a, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying just because we're two cities, we're one neighbor, we're one community. And that's all. I'm saying exactly the same as you. I want just to just keep the restoration going smoothly instead of having, you're having those service vehicles then going miles out of the way. They come all the way down, they get to a gate and have to go miles to 27 back to Sterling to get back over there. That's all I was asking. So yeah, if it's a week, you know, just to help that restoration. So the town, we're not hindering that process. Remember the Thank whole you. Town is, or that, that whole Gary? Of town is serviced by SPL off Griffin Road. It doesn't commit from Sterling or anywhere from the south. It's all coming from the north. I think you got to give Newell some words here too because everybody else. Yeah, I'll let Newell have the word. Go ahead. Okay. A few words. Let's start with some history. And Andrew, our mayor, Mecca Fink, opened the gate down there with Pembroke Pines. No. No. Please come listen. On, come on, let's not have an argument about it. And Andrew. We don't need a whole long history. Just That's get to right. Your point. Just and get the your gate point. was down there, was never closed until this gate was installed. Never to be reopened except for three things. Police going through, fire going through, post office going through, and the exception, an emergency situation such as a hurricane where it will be open before the hurricane and after the hurricane where the emergency has passed the hurricane, it will be closed. That was the verbal agreements given to the residents of 199th. Now, it was opened by order of the mayor. The second time it's been opened by the mayor. And I'm glad I did it. Go ahead. But you forgot to put a close date on it. So therefore... There wasn't an open date on it. Do I have a floor or do you want the floor? Go ahead. Okay, turn your mic off. Gladly. Today, while clearing out front, the trucks come through were quite continuous, doing various different deliveries in Pembroke Pines. Three wreckers came through with wrecked cars. Tomorrow, if it was open, there'd be 12 wreckers come through because once one knows the shortcut, they'll use it all the time. Several residents that live down at my end know some people down in Pembroke Pines. The kids, they would hit the gate and then they'd hit the gas and they'd use the speed humps as ski jumps coming down with their cars. And by the time they got down to us, there's skid marks now at the stop sign at Griffin where they were stopping. And one of them almost hit my wife while she was hauling stuff out to the front. That is when I called town hall and said, when are you closing it? It's not scheduled to be closed. And I went ballistic because the last time 
someone open the gate, it wasn't closed for almost 20 years. And that's the truth. And the deal was, as soon as the emergency is over, and that's the hurricane, the gate is closed. Police goes through, fire goes through, the post office goes through. That's the only one that goes through. If you want to give some of the 200 clickers that you bought to all of FPL, Comcast, and them for the hurricane, that's fine. But as soon as that is over, change the code. That's Thank tough. you. I, I, I got to tell you, common sense tells me Newell's one person on that street. There's a lot of other people. If your power's out or the power's still in the neighborhood, I would tell you, I'm living without power right now. It's friggin' miserable. Okay? It doesn't get any worse than that. So, my personal opinion is once the power's all gone, uh, once FPNL can say they've addressed the power's fixed, or you, I'm good. They're closed now. But I'm good with leaving it open until FPNL is done getting the power grid on. Because I would tell you, that's still an emergency situation because in Hollywood today, they uh, had some deaths from elderly people because they had no power and they uh, died of heat exhaustion. So I don't know if you guys heard about all that, but, but there's stuff, guys. And no power is a life safety situation. We don't know everybody lives out there. We don't know who lives in a heart monitor. I personally sleep with a CPAP machine, not using it, because I don't have power. I mean, I can hook up the generator, but you want refrigerators working and other things working. But I would tell you there are life safety issues out there if you don't have power. I, I would agree with, with uh, as far as a p and once, once the power's on, then that's I'm the good. end of it. I don't care about because it. Because cable can wait, everything no. else can wait. They, I mean, they've been doing it for a long time, so it doesn't really matter. But the power is important. There could be people on portable dialysis, all kinds of stuff. We don't know. So, you know, those gates can be open until all power is restored. That's Here's it. That's my opinion. I, uh, what are we clearly, clearly power is, can be a life safety issue. I'm not disputing that. I just don't understand the, the nexus between that and that gate being open. Um, you know, because, let me finish, because, you know, that FPNL certainly can get to the address they need to get to to do a repair. What I'm concerned with the statement that all power comes on, as I said earlier, that there can be one lingering house that, for whatever reason, you know, has, uh, you know, maybe, maybe major damage, maybe a huge tree fell on it, destroying that whole side of the house that has it. Nobody's living in that house anymore. Go because they can't, you know, it's, it's unlivable at this point, but technically it has no power and the gate stays open. I, I wouldn't that, do that. that, that, I, I that close well that, and that's, that's, that's my concern with the statement of until power is restored to all homes. And that's why I kind of, you know, to me, within a week after the event, not to say that there was not, you know, there isn't some exception mm -hmm. language in there, but to me, a week after the event is time to have certainly all the roads cleared, so that you have access to all the homes and the majority of the power should be, should be in place. Listen, uh, uh, clearly in that statement, I know some people here in the town of Southwest Rangeview who had their weather head ripped off their house. Mm -hmm. right. So that's a whole separate scenario. That wouldn't be an FPL problem because they have to bring in a separate contractor Correct. to fix the weather head before FPL will even come fix their problem. Correct. So I would, those don't apply. I mean, but if the grids are running, and most of the grids are fed off of Griffin in our case, or down the middle, as, as Bob said. Uh, if the grids are up, I'm good with going ahead and closing them. You know what I mean? If they're individual houses and stuff, we're not going to do it. Maybe nobody's living there, like you said, or whatever the case may be. But if the grids are up and fp and telling us, you're on, close the gates. Right. You know, I don't care if it's midnight. I'll go out there and close them. I don't care. I mean, I delayed. Uh, a lot of people wanted me to open the gates on Friday. I said... I don't think I think it's too early. No, no need to open them on Friday. We're not getting this thing till Saturday. So I went on my Saturday noon. They got open, and here Andy and I went out there and closed them today. It was a little comical because they didn't want to close, 
and then one of them didn't have power. Join in here because the, you, I, but, you, but, you, you but, can't make this stuff up. If Andy didn't go with me and I came back to tell him this story, he'd probably think I was picking on Newell. Let's go back to a little bit of the history. Let's just do it like Noel said. If they want in and out, they will get in and out. You know, there's old saying, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Who wanted the gates? Why'd you want them up? Now you're a community. What were you before? Now you're gated from your community. I mean, those trucks will get through. Comcast will get through. Everybody will get through. There's a way to get through. They find their way. They find their way. You know, gas is a problem, but not for those emergency vehicles going through. They've, they've got resources. They're not like us standing in line at the Shell or, or you gas. They're not. And seriously, you fought hard to get those gates up. Right. You wanted to be cut off because you hated the cut through traffic and you hated being a community. You were a community, whether you were Pembroke Pines or not. So that's what you get. Can I go ahead? Go uh, ahead. Sure. Uh, let's let's uh, do this. At this point, I'd say just leave the gates closed. Okay. And if we see a need that's to to open them, FPL requests us to open them. I'm pretty sure we can open them pretty quick. If if um, you know if it's just becoming a real problem. Sure, they'd put a request in. Can we open those yeah. gates? I'm sure they would. Yeah. Yeah, they I would. I mean, they would. I mean, yeah. and 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 I would think we would honor that request. I mean. Absolutely. Because they're going to tell you if it's a problem for them. Should the gates have gone up in the first place? Stop and think about that. Uh, yeah, no, you know, no. I mean. Hold, hold on, D. Steve's talking. Actually, I didn't to uh, I'm talking. No, no, no. That's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I, I just think I, I'm certainly, I think the gates are closed. They need to stay closed at this point. Yeah. Um, I just think in fairness to the mayor, in fairness to the administration, that it would be good if we nailed down the policy a little bit better for future situations that that's my point so that it's not so much a judgment call it's not you know and and then we're having this conversation each time that we have a clear policy this is when they open this is when they close and we're just executing policy we're not making judgment calls yeah but, Andy, I, but Andy wanted to jump in yeah just the the last time this had happened there was we we got hit with not long after the gates went in we we got hit with a a, a fairly light storm I had anticipated it to be worse than it was, but it, it wasn't that bad, and I had opened the gates in advance of that. And this count, well, almost this council, you know, Council Member Schroeder's new, but the other four of you with, with, with former Mayor Nelson discussed it at the time and established a kind of a policy that in the event of a life safety issue with a storm, that we didn't want to be responsible for those neighborhoods, people being trapped in those neighborhoods in the event of a storm that they needed to be able to get out in advance. If there was a storm and there were trees down, they needed, they needed to be able to exit the community. And we had trees done out, down out there. Uh, the mayor and I talked about it. The, the goal, the intent was to open the gates as late as possible so that we didn't create a problem, but that the gates would be open from a public safety standpoint. And as the mayor said, they were opened on, on Saturday in advance of the storm. They were closed today because the storm has passed. The roads have been cleared. And that was consistent with the discussion that came from this council previously. So, I, you know, I'm comfortable with what we did based on the direction I had, because mm -hmm. I got chewed on pretty good the last time around when I, when I opened them up, rightly or wrongly, it doesn't matter. But the goal this time, and the mayor and I spoke a lot about it last week, was we wanted to make sure the community was protected, that they were safe. We did not, as a town, want to be responsible for somebody being trapped in that neighborhood, not being able to get out or public safety vehicles not being able to get in. I, I'm very comfortable with what we did from Saturday until today. If this council wants to establish a different policy, that's up to you. But the decision the last time we discussed it at, at, at length was from a public safety standpoint, not a neighborhood convenience or recovery vehicle convenience, but from a public safety standpoint. So, uh, I mean, obviously it's up to you if you want to change that, that format, but just as long as we're talking history, that was really the discussion that came out last time was that we wanted to make sure that, that, that the community was safe and they'd be able to get in and out. And, and that's what we did. Right. I th if I could yeah. chime in here, I, I think virtually every you know, weather related or, or what have you uh, emergency is a judgment call. 
i don't see where any set policy would make sense because i'll give you a perfect example last year we had uh, hurricane matt we were in the bullseye and we you know we dodged that one big time yep. i mean there was virtually there was you know a couple palm fronds right you know and then you see uh, irma come through and we're leveled you know in some areas i mean uh, you know so it's a judgment call Definitely. you know i think every i don't i don't think there's any hard set uh policy we can put on it you know other than we open it we, it's been open for four days uh close it and if we need to open it again fpl says we need this thing open that's another story i mean we've got two other gates we're talking about too yep. right. you know for the pot i think it's just a judgment call on the on you know on on the administrator's part and uh, we're there you know close them and if we need to open them again we'll open them again you know but <coughs> that's why i I, I, okay. I think we beat this to death. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't. Listen. I, I don't disagree. I, I, you know, I'm good. It, I just it, wanted us to share it yeah, and just yeah. kind of yeah. know where, where you wanted to be with it. Yeah. I, I, I guess I, I don't disagree at all with what anybody's saying. I think they're all valid points. Um, but I don't disagree with what Debbie's saying either, that um, it may have made sense to leave it open another day or two as this was still going on. I, it's, it's a judgment it's call. It's a judgment and, call. And the call was made, and, yeah. you know, yep. and I don't think anybody's going to be happy one way or the other, you know. But well, you the the only call. thing we don't know, I don't know that we know the answer, is 202 closed yet? No. Okay. So just so everybody knows, 202 has been activated to be closed. It does not have power. So I believe that the gate is set up that even if it does lose power, that they go into automatic open mode. I'm not sure of that, but I think that. That's um, I remember it if it loses yeah, well, power. That was uh, it's uh, open. So 202 does not have power, but it's been programmed to be closed. But I don't know if it'll close on its own. So if power gets back to it, we need to physically go out there and close it. I, I agree with uh, uh, Councilmember Jablonski. Just leave it the way it is. If we get a call from FPNL or anybody, then open them. Just leave it. I'm okay. You know? So that's, but to. I mean, they have ways of getting in there. That's not the only way in. Yeah, but but to an earlier point, so that's how we know when power's restored. When <laughs> how long has that closed? gate been up? <laughs> Five years that gate's been up, and so people find their way that's in That's our and trigger. Out. Put a camera out there, and then we'll know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll know. Okay, you guys got power. <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, leave, leave it be. Leave it closed. Okay. okay. Motion to adjourn. adjourn. All right, that wasn't too painful. Question. Good to see you.